my inky pin friends. Welcome back to Larry's Fountain Pin Reviews. Bam! So, today, let's go back to, to the 1960 era. That's when these pins, the Schaefer, black and white with chrome, vintage by now, came into play. Uh, these are the kind of pins that I would use uh, back in the day. And uh, they weren't an expensive pin back there. Um, I think you could get them for under a buck back then, maybe 50 cents, maybe a little more. But they weren't expensive. Uh, it's a cartridge fill. Uh, and I do like the Schaefer clip on it. And it has Schaefer on the clip as well. Uh, with kind of a diamond type of point on the finial. And on the bottom is the same type of uh, point on the bottom of the barrel. Um, it's a nice looking pin. And on the cap, it has kind of like lines going down the cap. So an interesting pin. Uh, Snap-on cap. Uh, now, the length of the pin when you see it just like this is uh, 4.93 inches. It does post securely, and that's going to bring it to 5.79 inches. The weight, not a heavy pin, 10.1 Gs. So, the nib is a medium steel nib. And it has a shaver on it with the trademark and the M for medium, made in the good old USA. And... Let's see. Let's see if we can get a good look with the paper behind it. And the feed. And then as you come down the barrel, there's not a, really a step off there. It's uh, You have a nice size grip. And another chrome band right here. I haven't polished the pin up or anything, so I will give uh, a lot of these pins a, a polish job soon. Let's twist off, twist off the cap. And it does have a Schaefer cartridge. And so that's what this pin uses, is a Schaefer cartridge to fill, okay? So what I want to do now, I want to fill these pins and show you how I fill the cartridge. First of all, get my tool kit out here. You need one of these. To all you new folks out there that are learning about fountain pens, that are learning how to fill your pins either by a converter or cartridge, these uh, needles are not sharp, as you can see. They're made for ink. Drawing ink up and you put that in there. So, what I'm going to do, I am going to use some of the Levenger Raven Black. Thank you to Adam for sending me the ink. And I have one of these little doodads. Uh, they're for what, for toothbrushes or something? Wasn't it? I don't remember. Uh, so anyway, I'll just set that in there because that's where it's perfect for it. So let's go ahead and ink this up. Doesn't need a whole lot of ink. So here we go. So I'll just stick the needle to the converter. You with me? All you new people. And then there. I'm just going to put that much in it. And I'll put this back on the pen there. And let that get some ink flowing into the nib and feed. And while that's doing that... I better 
wipe off everything I got. Inked it up, didn't I? Hmm. It never fails, does it? I always get something icky, don't I? Don't I? Yes, your fingers especially. Mm -hmm. What the heck? Now I gotta clean off this table later, but now, now. Okay, so. Here we go. Here we go. So. I'll set that aside. So you gotta do that. So. Now. Let's see if the pen is ready to write yet. Some get uh, get that ink flowing really good in the nib and feed and it starts right up. Some you have to get it kind of started for them. So here it is posted. And you know, that's a perfect fit right there, I think. This is the perfect length for a cap on the barrel. And this is also comfortable. But I do prefer the cap on this one to give it a little bit extra length so it can sit on my hand a little better. Let's see if it's ready to write yet. And as you see, it's not writing. And that can be scary if you're new because you're probably thinking, why isn't the ink getting to the feed and the nib? What did I do? Did I do something wrong? No. Is that sometimes it takes a little longer to get in there. So you can do this. See if you can get it in there. Or you can do this. And there you go. Voila. But it will work. Okay, so let's get you right in here. Okay. All right, this is a vintage shaper. School pen. Back in the day, back in the good old days. Now I'm just going to put M for medium nib there. And we'll do some writing. And it does write very nicely. Let's see, sorry about that. All right, I'll just do a little few S's here. That's, and it has some really good ink flow. How about the reverse writing? And I'll just stop here because it does have a totally different line variation. So there you go. And we'll check for wetness. Nice, juicy, wet nib. Lays down the ink and bah! Just like I like my nibs. So, there you have it, my friends. This is the Schaefer Scoop Pen. 1960, the year. Uh, if you're new into fountain pens, or if you're a pen enthusiast as myself, this is a pen that I would think you'd probably like. I picked up this pen from uh, AB a. Rustic, a. Rustic Relic. Relics. Yeah, AB Rustic Relic from Big Bad Brad's store. And uh, it really is a nice writer. It's a nice look on it. Nice track look with that black and the chrome cap and nice clip. It's a Schaefer. And that's one of uh, my favorite brands of pens. So... I'm going to leave it at that. So, I showed you the pen. I gave you the measurements. Tell you a little bit about the pen. Show you how to fill the cartridge with a syringe. Show you how to get started. Get the ink flowing. So, hopefully, this is helpful on how to fill a cartridge. And a little bit of history on this Schaefer School pen from the 60s. Very important there. Very important. So, folks, thank you for joining me on Larry's Fought and Pin Reviews. Until my next review, stay safe, healthy, and as always, don't text and drive. Bye-bye.